Welcome to this edition of The Astronauts. I'm Lynn Bondurant. During this program, we will relive the historic space flight of John Glenn. In 1962, a Mercury spacecraft was launched into orbit. Called Friendship 7, this Mercury spacecraft carried Glenn around Earth three times. Now for our program. In Godspeed, John Glenn. 10, 9, 8, 7. shut down when Friendship 7 should separate from the booster rocket and begin orbital flight.
Across Africa, races Friendship 7 at 17,545 miles an hour, 300 miles a minute, four miles for every heartbeat of John Glenn. Friendship 7 streaks through the night of tomorrow and races toward the dawn of yesterday. Above the Indian Ocean flashes Friendship 7, far beyond human sight, seen only by the electronic instruments of the coastal sentry as she records the lightning passage of the man in space. John Glenn, the familiar time references of Earth no longer apply, for he journeys around our world in just 88 minutes, outracing the sun that needs 24 hours to circle the same globe. Roger, 
I do have uh, a lights in sight on the ground, over. All uh, right, Roger, I understand you there. Just off to your right there. That's a fair Just to my right, I can see a big pattern of light, apparently right on the coast. Uh, I can see a, the outline of a town and a very bright light just to the south of it. Hey, Roger, that's Perth and Rockingham you're seeing there. Uh, Roger, the lights show up very well. And thank everybody for turning them on, will you? Uh, Roger, sure well, John. Friendship 7 streaks home, an unseen comet darting across the land of its origin. Canaveral contact, how do you copy, over? Uh, Friendship 7 uh, to Canaveral, uh, read you loud and clear, how me, over? Roger, Friendship 7, Canaveral contact, read loud and clear, stand by the Capcom, please. Roger. Uh, Roger, still reading you. Uh, 7, this is Cape, go to Bermuda now. Uh, Roger, this is Friendship 7. Friendship 7, that's Bermuda Capcom. Hi Roger, this is Friendship 7. I'm controlling flight by wire present time. I have no uh, left jaw, low thrust. Minor trouble aboard Friendship 7. A malfunction in the automatic control system was causing the spacecraft to yaw in skid-like fashion, away from its proper flight attitude. But Glenn is overriding the faulty system and now manually controls Friendship 7 on fly-by-wire, directing its movements by hand control much like a pilot flies a plane. Fly by wire at present time. Understand? Friendship 7, this is Cato Capcom standing by. Cato Cato. Friendship 7, we have uh, telemetry solid and check all your systems out okay. Uh, we will remind you to start the uh, pre dark side uh, checklist as soon as you lose contact with us. All right, your Friendship 7. Friendship 7, Friendship 7, this is Muge Comtake. Friendship 7, this is Muge Comtake. Do read, over. Your friendship 7, Lou Shea, Capcom. Uh, will you confirm that your landing bag switch is in the off position? Over. Uh, that is affirmative. Landing bag switch is in the center off position. Uh, Roger, you haven't had any uh, banging noises or anything of this type at higher rates. Negative. Uh, Roger, they, they wanted this answer. Uh, Masked behind that routine report, the, the first hint of or potential or disaster. It came when astronaut Cooper relayed a request from Mercury Control asking Glenn to check the status lights for the capsule's landing impact bag. Glenn reports, status normal. But ground stations are now receiving an ominous chilling signal, an indication that the heat shield on Friendship 7 seems to have come loose. Friendship 7, Hawaii contact. Hawaii, Friendship 7, over. Friendship 7, this is Hawaii Capcom. Uh, now you can still consider yourself go for the next orbit. Affirmative. I am go for the next orbit. Roger, understand it. MCC confirms that they are go at the present time for third orbit. Friendship 7, Friendship 7, this is California Comtech. California Comtech, do you read? Over. Hello, California Comtech, Friendship 7, loud and clear, how me? Roger, Friendship 7, this is California Capcom, where's your line, please, John? Uh, Roger, receiving you much better now, Wally, uh, very good. Uh, uh, 
Uh, John, the Aero Meds are real happy with you. You look real good up there. All right, fine. Glad everything's working out. I feel real good, Wally. No problems at all. Good show. We're real pleased to let you go by this time. We'll see you next time around. This is Mercury Control. We now have a contact with our Wireless Mexico station and with the Corpus Christi, Texas tracking station. The Friendship 7 spacecraft is now committed to its third orbit. This is Mercury Control. In Mercury Control at Cape Canaveral, a decision must be made, and soon. The signal pulsing down from Friendship 7 indicates still that the heat shield is loose. Could the signal be erroneous? There is no way to tell. But if it's true, then John Glenn could perish in a searing inferno when he plunges back into the atmosphere. The retro rockets that slow the spacecraft and head it back toward Earth are strapped over the shield. If they were left on after retro fire, instead of being jettisoned as in normal re-entry, then their straps might hold the shield in place before they burn off. They might possibly save Glenn from the 3,000 degrees of re-entry heat until he's deep enough into the atmosphere for its force to hold the shield in place. But the decision must be made soon. Even now, Glenn is streaking toward the United States, and he must begin the retro sequence 300 miles west of California if he's to land in the planned recovery area 700 miles south and east of Florida. We'll give you the countdown uh, for retro sequence time, John. You're looking good. Uh, Roger, we only have five zero seconds to retrograde. Over. Uh, that's a firm. I'll give you a mark of uh, 45 mark. California, uh, California. This is Cape Flight. Go ahead, Cape Flight. Uh, we'd like to leave the package on at least through Texas. So keep tell him to keep his retro jettison switch off. Uh, John, leave your retro pack on uh, through your pass over Texas. 20 please. seconds. Right here.
with John Glenn and Friendship 7 is lost. Uh, this is Friendship 7. I think the uh, pack just let go. Uh, Friendship 7, this is Kate. Do you read? This is Friendship 7, a real fireball outside. Furnace-like heat of re-entry has created a barrier of ionization around Friendship 7, holding all voice communication. Alone, he plunges back toward Earth, a fiery meteorite. atmosphere breaks his descent, slowing Friendship 7 from 17,500 miles an hour to 1,300 miles an hour in slightly over three minutes. And the forces of gravity slam against John Glenn until he weighs eight times his normal weight. Friendship 7, but John Glenn cannot hear the message. Right around 443, Clyde. It was about on time. Keep talking, Al. Uh, Friendship 7, this is Cape, over. I Friendship 7, this is Cape. How do you read, over? All right, you're reading loud and clear. How you doing? Going to drug early. It's a rocky first uh, inside. Uh, drug came out. Drug is out. Roger, drug came out at 30,000 in about a 90 degree yaw. Roger, is the drug rolling off? Roger, drug looks good. Roger. Scope did not come out. Roger, pumping the scope out. Dig in. Roger, re-entry checklist complete. Standing by for a minute and ten. Roger. Coming down on ten. Circles are open. Roger. Roger. Main suit is on green. Shoot us out in reach condition at 10,800 feet in. Beautiful shoot. Shoot looks good. On O2 emergency and the shoot looks very good. Rate of descent has gone to about 42 feet per second. The shoot looks very good. Hello, Mercury Recovery. This is Friendship 7. Do you receive? Mercury, Friendship 7, and Steelhead, loud and clear. Right here, Steelhead. Uh, Friendship 7. 
Gentlemen, the shoot looks very good. Over. Home is the Voyager. Behind a journey of 81,000 miles through three days and three nights in just four hours and 56 minutes. At 3.04 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Friendship 7 comes to rest aboard the United States destroyer, Noah, and John Glenn returns to the people of Earth. A change of clothes, a breath of cool air, a short debriefing. Then, Glenn leaves the Noah, heading for the aircraft carrier Randolph, under the golden splendor of his fourth sunset of the day. John Glenn's historic space flight paved the way for others to follow. Thank you for joining us for this edition of The Astronauts. I'm Lynn Bondran at the NASA Lewis Research Center in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs>